Hey guys, welcome to the uh, the Pixels Get Me podcast. Uh, this is a podcast where we're trying to build a community around uh, gaming tech. Uh, it's a pretty big umbrella, but uh, that's the whole point. So it gives us a, a large, a large bit to talk about. Um, today uh, we have a couple guests, but I'll uh, I guess I'll introduce them first, and then we'll kind of we'll kind of go back to me. Uh, so who wants to go first? Who we got online? I'll take go. It. Oh, go, oh, go, 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 go right ahead. No. All, right. All right, zero goes zero. first. <laughs> I've been with uh, Pixels for a little bit now. Um, started with Warframe, played a little bit of Path of Exile. Curves, you can give your introduction. All right, so uh, I'm Curves. I'm an OG, BG, EB, DB, veteran viewer of Pixels. You know, <laughs> just all over the place. I'm also known as the general sex appeal of this stream and podcast. So, oh, uh, sure. yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. Don't be jealous. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. So, hi. All right. So, so I'll go back to uh, to zero real quick. Um, yeah, we met um, when I was streaming Warframe, and uh, zero is currently streaming as well over on uh, mixer.com slash zero spelled out Z E R O infinity. Zero seven, and those zero sevens are numbers. Yep. So feel free to check him out as well. Uh, he's he usually plays Warframe. Are you playing anything else lately? Um, not lately. Just Warframe. All right, cool. And Curbs, we met playing Diablo, but uh, but what are you playing right now? Uh, mainly Monster Hunter on the Switch. That's about it. For the most part, doing Diablo, doing Path of Exile, doing, doing plan to go back to Warframe, but. You know. All right, cool, awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, for joining me tonight, guys, and, and always, you know, hanging out and streaming stuff. Um, always. So I'm over at uh, mixer.com/slash/pixelsgetme. Uh, I've been streaming over here for about seven months, uh, but I felt like you know a podcast is kind of a natural uh, a natural way to save something of what we do over on the stream. I don't I don't upload the whole stream anywhere, uh, so you just kind of kind of catch it live, but. Uh, the podcast, you know, we have some interesting talks and these guys, you know, I, I usually, usually have them hanging out in discord with me while we're live. So we have some decent discussions and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. So I'm going to move this over here now. Uh, the music playing in the background is brought to us by pretzel. Check them out. I uh, just Google them. Pretty awesome. Uh, so lately, um, we're still, we're still playing Diablo three on stream, um, doing season 15. Uh, Paragon 300 something on a Demon Hunter. Nothing too crazy yet. Still haven't unlocked Primals. I'm making some progress though. Uh, for for news, uh, for gaming news, let's uh, let's start with uh, with Breach. So they recently, uh, just a couple days ago, they posted this timeline update on public testing. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I know, you know. I know that this is going to be a, a good game for the stream. Um, one, you know, it's free to play, so the barrier to entry is fantastic. Uh, just like Warframe was a fantastic choice for the channel, too. I think this is going to be a, a very logical choice. But one thing that I know uh, this stream is missing is, like, the competitive side. You know, so this is going to kind of bring in that fourth or that, that fifth character onto the dungeon, which is the, the Void Demon. Or the Veil Demon, rather. Um, and the Veil Demon is going to be able to mess with people. So I'm very much looking forward to that side of the uh, of the stream. Maybe some some anger or or rage, you know, because I don't think we have enough of that emotion. We just usually chill and just get loot and uh, and kill bosses, you know, like nothing nothing too crazy. But, you know, every stream needs a little bit of rage. I think it's a good balance. So we'll see how the game plays. Um, as of right now... They're not sure if they're going to leave uh, the alpha test that's coming as, a, as an NDA or if it's going to be a, uh, you know, if we're going to be able to stream it. So as we find out more, we'll, we'll definitely let you guys know. Um, what are you guys thinking about uh, Breach? What have you seen on it? What are you, what are you looking forward to? I am looking forward to it greatly. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, especially if Curvis is playing, you know, I got to crush him. Uh, uh, good luck with that. I think, uh, in general, as a whole, it's going to be rather interesting to see what comes of it. I would very much enjoy playing 
uh, both person challenging and the fail demon as a whole, because who doesn't love crushing the soul of your entire uh, entire group? You know, right. who's playing through your dungeon. So, I mean. yeah, I had asked uh, on their Discord um, today. They were talking about um, what the test windows are potentially going to look at look like. Right. Um, you know, someone was thinking, yeah, it'd be like three to four hours or something like that. Hopefully it's not, you know, during the day because, like, we have jobs. And one of the devs was like, yeah, we're probably going to have some day streams because we totally like to play our game at work. So, <laughs> which which I, I totally appreciate, you know. It's like, of course they're going right. to they're gonna play the game at work. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I asked um, for the Windows, like, one of the things they want to test is, you know, having a X amount of players hitting the servers and, and bringing them down to see what happens. But I was curious since you can, you can solo and just have like AI bots with you for the rest of the team or have an AI veil demon and stuff like that, that, um, like I asked, Hey, can you, are you going to leave an offline version that we can just test bots and just kind of test bot AI and see the balance there? And, uh, and it was an ops guy that was replying. He was like, um, and I, I should, I should like shout out his name. I don't remember who it was. One sec. It was, um, give me a second. Uh, as a whole, I think overall it could also bring, if you're nerdy enough to like some sort of D and D type aspect, if you have a veil demon that could, um, that could, uh, that could create some interesting, uh, scenes and battles for that type of thing. So, yeah, I think it was, um, it wasn't one letter. One letter is pretty active. He's one of the uh, one of the QC dev guys. But I think it was often O P H T E N. He was just answering questions. But I'd asked like, "Hey, can we can we potentially just have like an AI check?" And uh, he's like, "Yeah, I actually didn't think about that. That's a good thing to bring up." But at the same time, someone's probably thought of it because he's just an ops guy. So he's uh, he'll bring that to the team and see. But it'd be cool if it was just like available all the time. You know, and you could just AI it, and then every once in a while, multiplayer was on while they were doing the alpha. But, but we'll see. You know, um, over on their Instagram, um, they're having a, a nice little spotlight of character art and stuff like that. Uh, so far, yeah, I, just I, checking that out. I haven't seen like anything that I don't like. I think I'm. I think the character designs are looking really good. Um, it's definitely like a. It's not like old fantasy. You know, it's like current current stuff you know it looks really really good um so i'm looking forward to the artwork a little bit more on that um and i think that's all i'm going to say on breach you guys got anything else i'm just anxious to play it yeah i think you covered most most everything so all right cool so uh next topic um there was a a spotlight on GameSpot regarding uh torchlight frontiers and I didn't get to play nearly as much Torchlight as I wanted to, but uh, but I enjoyed the game for sure. Uh, what are you guys thinking about uh, Torchlight Frontiers and the, and the comparison between like Diablo and Destiny and all that? Uh, as far as Torchlight, I mean, I played the second one and I played the first one, so I'm very curious what this is going to bring. Overall, I played Diablo, I played Torchlight, played PoE, played all those uh, and just in general top and Destiny. RPGs. And Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. As a whole, if Torchlight Frontier ends up as good as uh, 1 and 2, uh, I put, honestly, when Torchlight came out, I put about as many hours in it as I do have, as I have Diablo. So I, I'm looking forward to it. Any, pretty much anything Torchlight, I'm down. Man. Yeah, and it looks like they're they're revamping like the set, the set based equipment system, and that kind of that kind of worries me because on Diablo three at the moment, um, it's one of the things I like about Poe is the lack of sets that it kind of lets you just build out however you want to build out, but the Diablo sets keep you in a. Uh, in a box, you know, where certain things drop and you'll be like, yeah, I'll never, ever, ever use that for anything because it doesn't synergize with any of the four sets for the X class, you know? So hopefully they, they look at that, like, not that, you know, once you have the sets, it's done, but like, you know, something, something more, 
I don't know. That's my only that's my only concern on it. What about uh what about sets in uh Destiny? I haven't played too much Destiny Curbs, so uh sets aren't really a thing in Destiny. It's more you have certain uh basically the highest tier gear is exotics and they have certain flavor texts which gives them different abilities and different stat or whatever. I don't know. It's not really set specifically. Gotcha. All right, cool. Anything else on uh, this one, guys? No. I'm good. No, yeah. All right, so since we're on the subject slightly of Destiny, um, there's this uh, there's this Masterwork core discussion also over on GameSpot. Do you mind uh, explaining in brief uh, Masterwork cores, Curbs? All right, so are we talking before or after the change um, that you would like me to explain? I would say after the change, but like why it's changing or what the big deal is. Okay. So essentially what Masterwork cores are is uh, the highest version of a weapon you can get. That's very generous to say, considering they don't really change much if it's a Masterwork or not. But essentially, if it's a Masterwork item, it has a certain extra stat be be it a PVE or a PVE stat, depending on what you choose. I believe that's been upgraded at this point, so I can do a little bit more. But that's about all a masterwork really is on a weapon or a piece of armor. Uh, in terms of what they changed, when you break down a masterwork weapon, uh, and this was the only way to get them, you would get a masterwork core, uh, which you could then use if you got enough to upgrade another weapon that is not Masterwork into a Masterwork weapon. From what I can tell, the only changes to Masterwork uh, cores that have been made or that are going to be made is the uh, frequency that you're able to obtain said cores. And that's... I. It's not a massive change, and... As far as I'm concerned, it does not seem, honestly, like that good of a change, considering the game's already too easy as it is. It's it's not... Dif- if you play far enough through the game, it's it's not really a problem to get those. So. And then the other final bit that they'd, uh, they'd mentioned, that um, you're less likely to get a duplicate drop of an exa- exotic item you already own. What do you think yeah. about that? That's. They have been saying it's less likely and less likely to get a duplicate of what you have already gotten every single update and DLC. <laughs> right. Uh, they've put in, ever since they brought back Xur, you get the uh, weekly exotic from him that will not be something you've already obtained. However,. There are people who have gotten duplicates from that, even. So I would not trust that you will not get duplicates as often. So I, it's <laughs> it no a negligible percentage change. Got it. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Cool. Anything on this uh, to say, Zero? No, I haven't played any of Destiny. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to. Uh, the BlizzCon virtual ticket. So initially, I was I was slightly excited about the BlizzCon virtual ticket because uh, the Diablo shout out with uh, Sombra getting a Demon Hunter skin, which is cool, in my opinion. But this is uh, is way cooler. Uh, so basically, they're going to be giving they're going to have World of Warcraft Classic Edition. Um, at BlizzCon on the floor, playable. And if you get the BlizzCon 2018 virtual ticket, you also get access to the same demo that they're going to be playing on the floor. I'm not sure exactly when. Uh, they're saying that, you know, it's you're probably going to be able to play it for like a week. I don't, I'm not sure when it's going to start. And But here's like the funny thing. I wonder if it's going to have like that same issue with like WoW Classic launch. <laughs> <laughs> where people were like trying to like log in and like it just wasn't happening like i wonder if that's going to be like one of the features they keep you know with the with the classic remix 
Anyway, did you guys uh, play classic, or did you guys play back in the day? And will you, were you thinking about playing classic later? Uh, I played vanilla. I unfortunately I put too much time <laughs> in to want to go back. If I go back, that would be the end of my social life as a as a whole. Yeah. So I cannot do it. Understood. Yeah, I didn't play much of WoW. Not at all, huh? Uh, I played a little bit. I played the trial. Okay, but okay. that was pretty much the extent of it. Yeah, so back when I played uh, Classic, um, I was a, uh, a troll... I don't know, troll hunter or something. Maybe I was a shaman. I don't remember. Um, I ended up going to uh, to Booty Bay and Ratchet or whatever. And I was between the two on the boat and it glitched out. So, uh, so I was basically, every time I tried to log in to the game, I was in the loading screen between the two zones. So I was just in like this infinite cycle of crash. So for like wow. four or five days, and you know this is this I don't know a couple weeks into the into the launch and everything, um, so for four or five days, like my character was completely like immovable and unsavable, unsalvageable. Like <laughs> so many little little uh, game masters would like talk to me and be like, "Hey, okay, it looks like we got it fixed. You can log in now." And then I log in and I was still like on the boat, and then I'd be like spawning into the other zone and be like, "No, no, no, no." And there it goes. And it's crashed again. Like it was so bad. And I was like, all right, cool. So I'm just going to count this as a loss. And, uh, and then I just turned off my subscription and didn't log in for like the remainder of 20 days, you know, it's kind of a bummer, but so that's my, that's my wild vanilla memories. I just, uh, I know how many bugs ex existed back then. And to like, when they were, when they were talking about making the classic edition, they were saying how many things would have to be straight up rewritten like from scratch because of how much the code base has changed that like just to make it again, they'd almost basically have to make wild classic again, which means they're going to make potentially the same bugs or worse when they make it again. So I I'm excited for it, for the nostalgia, but actually like playing through it and playing end game and, you know, doing, I guess, molten core. I, that was probably the molten core was like the, the end all be all raid, yeah. Back then in vanilla, I mean, and I guess yeah. AQ forty that was in there too. But um, it'd be cool to like play forty man, you know, raids and stuff. But um, yeah, <laughs> I can't rambler. He's he's in chat. He's like buying ammo. Yeah, that was a thing. You had to actually have a, an ammo pouch, and you had to buy ammo for your hunter and stuff like. That was awful. Anyway. Um, all right, cool. So we're done talking about that. Um, so as we segue into uh, the other side, uh, talking tech, um, final video game thing. I've got a surprise for the, uh, for the guys who tuned in and are on the podcast with me tonight. So thanks again, Curbs and Zero. Um, we're going to be playing some uh, Jeopardy that was on this past week. <laughs> and uh and basically they saved the video game category to last because these guys did absolutely awful so as gamers i'm just wondering like how good you would do you know so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see we're gonna see okay hey zero yeah i bet i feel worse than you <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you what do you mean yeah this is gonna this i apologize uh, pixels but you're about to have a mockery on your screen the likes that you've never seen before all right we'll see, Man, we'll see. he's got much he doesn't have much faith all right so uh so the first question uh for 200 this company's infinity allowed you to play characters from the incredibles in cars to name a few and you guys can buzz in by say buzz in nothing guys like radio silence uh, i'm trying to think i can Dude. think of it but i can't place it no it's done man you guys no, <laughs> no i don't know that, that would be that would be disney and the first guess was was pixar and the other guy asked disney so so he got it right 
cool. They got the 200 one. Wait, awesome. Wait, Disney, wait, Disney Infinity. Wait. We're talking about the thing that was it was recently shut down probably about a year ago. It had all these oh, characters, I, and you could like you could spawn in the guys on the Disney Infinity Rock or whatever, and you could play as the characters from the different games. And you could have like the the characters from Monsters Inc. in Star Wars and Star Wars in Monsters Inc. and stuff like that. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That's yeah. that's why I didn't realize what it was because it's something I would not care about in a million years. But, <laughs> yeah, but my it's, wife it's really wanted, I was trying to think of the name of the game, but it's Disney Infinity. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it just for the just for the figures, you know. Like it was cool seeing like some of the cartoon representations of these guys, and then you know it's like eight, eleven dollars, something like that per figure. So they're pretty solid little figures. They're you know just as good, well, probably better art than pops, you know. But uh, but yeah, so Disney Infinity. All right, so you guys are zeroed out right now. Zero has zero. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, for 400, Morrowind and Skyrim are iterations of this venerable set of games. Buzz in. Yeah, all right, go. The Elder Scrolls games. Oh, man. You, know, you didn't say, like, what are the Elder Scrolls, but hey, you're good, man. No, you're sorry. good. No, you're good. In the form of a question. <laughs> <laughs> the first guy asked Dragon Age? Nope. Uh, 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 nice try. All right. So for 600, oh, no. They're going to 1,000. I think uh, they're going to 1,000. I don't know. So you see this? The second iteration of this bungee game, and it was that dude smacking another dude, and he almost fell off the cliff. You know what I'm talking? Do you want me to Wait, replay? Was, do you want me to replay the, the clip? Can, no, it was yeah, just it was question. just like, hey, what what is this? And it was just the scene from the from the game. There's there's a scene. You see that? Oh. That's where you lose your light in Destiny 2. So, so you're buzzing in? <laughs> sure, buzz. What is when your character loses his light? No, it's in just Destiny it's 2. just asking like what game it was. What is Halo? Destiny, he, what is Destiny 2? And, and he's like, what is Halo? It's awesome, dude. It's so fantastic. What? <laughs> Wait, really? Yes, he what is Halo? Because he said Bungie. All right, 800. In the in the classic video game Joust, contestants were placed upon these birds. Buzz, what is ostriches? Ostriches. All right, cool. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, nice, dude. Eight hundred for zero. All right, six hundred. Yeah, I know, right? It's classic. Um, like really classic. Like we're talking, what like Atari classic? I mean, yeah, Joust that is rampage. Old. Yeah, yeah, totally rampage, dude. Awesome. All right, so final one. Big gaming story of 2018 is Fortnite. This genre of game where the winner is last shooter or last team standing. Buzz. Battleground. Oh. Battle what? It's a battleground. Battleground? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna Buzz. have to not. <laughs> Battle Royale. Oh, Battle Royale. Hey man, they get you on these little things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, so hey, thanks for playing Jeopardy, guys. That's you, fun. you did, you did okay. You know, compared to Battle Royale, says Alex Trebek. All right, all right. So, so let's move on to tech. Um, so, uh, so one thing that came out this this week uh, is the Oculus Quest. They were talking about it at the uh, at the um, Oculus Five their their summit where they talk about you know what's coming. And basically, um, the Oculus Quest is standalone VR without a computer, without a phone. And it actually has six degrees of freedom in movement, which right now, if you, uh, if you take like a, a Galaxy or a, a Pixel and you throw on Daydream, you have three degrees of freedom, which isn't like able to move around a room. Um, but yeah, so this is completely wireless. Uh, probably has, you know, an hour or two of battery life or whatever, but, um, another person, uh, let's say, I think it was John Carmack. Uh, he was saying that it has the equivalent graphics of last gen, uh, consoles. So, so we're talking about basically the first VR console. So I'm I'm pretty pumped about this. Like what I what I do in uh in real life, you know, has some uh, we do some VR stuff. So I'm 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 excited on that side. 
of uh of the spectrum but also as as a hobbyist to have like an oculus quest that i could just take with me on a trip or whatever and have vr without a computer um where i could actually like walk around a hotel room and it'll scan and i don't have to carry around uh i don't know like lighthouses for a vive where you have to have like tripods in the corner of the room so you can have like six degrees of freedom um this is pre this is pretty exciting stuff um i don't know what we're talking about for for like initial game launch but they're saying that they're they're trying to have as many titles as possible that are already on the oculus some of them like probably my favorite vr experience to date which is the climb i don't know if you guys are you guys messed around with vr at all i've seen vr and i know what the climb is seen okay. not uh no i've not tested anything yeah, maybe I should maybe I should do a VR stream one day because I did one like months ago with uh, with Beat Saber in my living room, but uh, I didn't do anything. Maybe that's the one I'd want to get. Yeah, Beat Saber's fun. Beat Saber is like, uh, you know, work. The climb is the best virtual reality introduction I would give anyone. I would just say, hey, put on this rift and and you can you can climb a mountain. Um, Beat Saber is the most fun. You know, because the climb is actually kind of stressful. Some people just can't handle it. Like, I've had people put on the headset and they just start panicking because they're on the side of a cliff. And and I'm just like, hey, man, just take the, take the headset off. It's all good. Just take it off. We're, we're fine. It's okay. You know, like, you can change your hands, you know, male, female, uh, colors, wristbands, watches, and all that. Like, you can make them your own. And then when you have it in game with an Oculus Touch, I mean, it's, like, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's it's definitely, like, suspending, you know, disbelief. Um so yeah, just having the climb in a in a small travel form, like I would buy it just for that, you know, because the climb is a solid game. Um, but yeah, so I'm 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 pretty pumped about this. Uh, we'll see we'll see. It says spring 2019, um, and it says 3.99. But I mean, it could be there might be multiple versions. This is like the low low version. Maybe they'll have like a a version with more uh, more space, you know, for more game installations and stuff like that. Um, that might cost a little bit more. We'll see. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped. You guys got anything else on uh, on Oculus Quest? I just hope it has super hot. Yeah, super hot. And, uh, super hot's a launch title. Super hot VR. Yeah. I have seen some people take their VR, not generally the Oculus Rift, but uh, on two planes, and I am very curious to see if anyone will take the this onto a plane and be that one guy that stands out it's just like what is he do what he's got this massive thing <laughs> yeah That's, i would like to see the videos of that because I, I know it'll happen yeah i would like to see the videos of the multiplayer in that because like there's uh like racket fury nx i think where it's multiplayer uh, you can have two people next to each other and you can be playing racquetball like in space and you're hitting it off the walls and like you're trying to knock off pieces of the walls that are like hexagons or whatever. And uh, you could be doing that on a plane, you know, like, <laughs> Ooh, <can laughs> like you just two, imagine? two people like two seats away from each other, you know, in, like the middle of like a, a seven, seven sixty seven or whatever. And <laughs> like playing racquetball and people are like just trying to eat the pretzels, you know. Can you imagine someone using that on a plane and then playing a horror game looking around and they're just, they turn to their right, not remembering there's a person in the seat next to them. Yeah. And they're just staring. At you. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty awkward. Cool stuff though. Um, all right. So let's, uh, that's all I've got on tech this, this week had a, had a bunch of tech stuff. I just didn't spend too much time, uh, perusing articles for the, uh, for the podcast but maybe next week we'll, we'll kind of do more of a focus on tech we'll see uh let's move on to new media uh so new media is typically like youtube stuff or uh netflix stuff stuff like that and very exciting to say that seven deadly sins season two which i mean there was a season two and it was four episodes so it was like a complete tease for season two a long time ago but the actual 24 episode season two is coming October fifteenth to Netflix. It's... What you got? What you got, Curbs? Uh, I do think it's cool that it's coming to Netflix. I would like to just point out that the season two is 
uh, already fully fully uh, released elsewhere, though. Yeah, but so you've already seen season two <laughs> in its entirety. Yes. All right. Well, then you know. Spoiler alert. Don't say anything else. All right. Cool. That interview was great. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, season one was so good um, that we we rolled right into season two thinking it was going to be fantastic and we were left completely hanging um but yeah solid solid anime i love the story uh the art the characters that's hilarious um completely inappropriate in some ways but still uh tame enough that i could watch with the kids and not be you know like super blushing in the corner you know but uh but yeah have you uh, have you seen uh seven deadly sins at all zero no but it is on my watch list yeah, so October fifteenth on on Netflix, like I would definitely have season one watched before then. That w- that's the goal yeah. I would set for you because it's good, man. And you don't want to you don't want to not have season two ready, you know, because it, it it leaves you hanging like hard. But uh, but it's so good, such a good uh, such a good show. Have you uh, have you seen the the console game, the uh, the Knights of Britannia? curbs have you seen that at all i have heard of it i think i saw a small clip of it at some point but that's yeah. about it yeah it's on it's on ps4 i i never i never got into it i didn't want to get into it because i didn't want to be like spoiling the uh the show you know so i i, I kind of controlled myself and didn't even mess with it at all but the art's a little bit different on the game too which is cool all right well i think that's all i've got for uh for this time um for the streamer shout out that i typically do at the end um i already shouted him out earlier but i'm gonna shout out zero again uh so zero who is with us tonight say hi again zero hello (laughs) zero streaming on mixer um i know who i'm gonna shout out next episode for sure uh but zero zero trumped that person so they're they're moving to the right so thanks so much uh for coming on and, and co-hosting with me zero um he's yep. coming up he's coming up on uh on mixer uh playing a lot of warframe um anything else on the on the playlist over on the stream man um right now it's either warframe maybe some path of exiles um i got um insurgency sandstorm but my pc can't handle that game and streaming at the same time yeah, even even Warframe can sometimes you know bring down a stream if you don't like turn stuff down significantly. So yeah, yeah, but cool, yeah, so, awesome. Well, thank so you yeah, for the so, shout out. yeah, so that's my shout out. I definitely check them out. Um, if you're listening to this in the future, you know, try to try to come back over to Mixer and see if uh, Zero's still streaming. I think he's going to be streaming for a while. Um, I think he enjoys it as much as I do. So um, and then uh, and then finally. Uh, thanks to our guests, so Zero and also Curbs. Thanks, Curbs, for uh, for hanging out with us, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, long, uh, long for the ride. Yeah, Curbs is a long time follower of the channel, and uh, and dare I say, friend. You know, because we've uh, we've well, had some. Well, I was meaning to talk to you about that. This is going to be my last time uh, here. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been good, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is your grand grand exit. He's actually the uh he's actually the king of uh of chat. He has a special um he has a special entrance. So I'll show this so for the people who are who are listening to the podcast, you're not able to see this unless you're listening to the podcast on YouTube. Um but I made a custom intro for Curbs uh specifically because he had, you know, so much street cred as my, you know, one of my oldest followers who's hung, hung out like religiously almost um, in the channel. So, yeah, so how do you feel about a church in your honor? Uh, it was just like, are you OK <laughs> with taking donations or <laughs> like how, you know. I don't even like know you how you have your holy doctrine prepared. Or... I don't I don't even know how to answer that question, Curbs. But this is okay. this is some of the stuff that comes up while Curbs is hanging out in chat or in Discord. So <laughs> um but but yeah, so this is his custom entrance just for, for everyone's viewing pleasure. 
No sound effects or anything, but uh, here goes. Oh man, we gotta change the scene. <laughs> it's like I gotta I gotta move that scene around so you can actually see him. But uh, but yeah, and then he ha also has a custom command where he can give all the uh, the peasants in the channel um, a blessing of coins. So that's you our. Know, that's, you haven't done that in a while. No, he hasn't blessed anyone in a long time. I've done it. Uh, the only time I haven't <laughs> done it is in this stream. During yeah. this stream that I've been here. So uh, yeah. No coins for for a zero or pixels for pointing that out. I am not. Yeah, I'm not the rambler. Mm. Oh yeah, well, I mean he deserves Ram it. Ram Rambler's but hanging out, man. You should. Uh... Unfortunately, he's just collateral damage at this point. Dude, because should... it's kind of like an. Think about it like this: you like you like action RPGs. It's kind of like an AOE. I can't exactly limit it to a single target. That's that's true. Yeah, so, I, so I guess Rambler will have to come back another day when uh, when Curbs is in the mood to bless Chet. Yeah, yeah he's suffering it, through it. He's all right. Yeah, sorry, Rambler. It's it's kind of like a DOT. It's not really a... I, I, I can't really control it. <laughs> all right, so so with that, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be doing another podcast uh, next week, um, probably Friday or Saturday night, um, right around midnight. That was a decent time. Uh, it worked for me anyway, and thanks thanks for making it work for you guys too. Uh, we're uh, we're live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Uh, nine on the weekdays and uh, ten on the weekends. So uh, so thanks so much for for hanging out. Um, try to uh, if you see this on YouTube, do the like, do the subscribe. If you see this on Anchor or or one of the other eleven places, it ends up as a podcast. Um, you know, do the applause, do the uh, the sharing, do the caring, do the retweeting if you see it on Twitter. I totally appreciate the support, guys. Uh, I want to keep making these episodes. And uh, and one of the things that will keep me doing that is seeing, like, some sort of response. So, um, either way, uh, thanks so much for hanging out. You guys are all awesome. Uh, shout out to chat. Thanks for hanging out and, uh, and throwing down some commentary. We appreciate you guys. And uh, have a good one. We'll see you.